reading out older IMDb reviews today related to the film Web of the Spider 1971 by our friend Antonio Margariti. This is the film sped up. Firstly, we're going to read out Steve underscore Nyland's review from the 23rd of June 2003, a 9 out of 10. Needs restoration. Calling Blue Underground. I recently found myself an original Italian widescreen print of this film that is gorgeous, and helps explain some of the negative user comments about it. Nella Stretta Morsa del Ragno, as I have been taught to call it, is more than just a technicolor revisitation of Antonio Margheriti's Castle of Blood. The problem is that he tried to make it much too more to explore the period detail in particular, and in doing so, the focus of the film became muddled. One of the aspects that made Castle of Blood so remarkable was Margarita's use of light and dark in such a calculated manner. Whenever Alan Foster strikes a match or lights a candle, it is an event within the framework of the shot. In Nella Strata, candles and matches become props to be carried around by characters to establish the sense of place and setting. Margariti's greatest miscalculation, though, was in lighting his sets to show off the rich, exquisite detail his larger budget could afford. The result is a series of events that look like they were filmed on a movie set, not a nightmare playing out in front of our eyes in living black and white. On that plane of reasoning, Nella Strata has more in common with Margariti's Virgin of Nuremberg of Christopher Lee, which is all about colour, picture, texture, and the musical score. Nella Stretta also amps up the music with a Robert Frippish atonal guitar riff that pops up whenever something weird is about to happen. The film also this the, the film this also becomes also most formulaic, and the suspense generated in Castle of Blood becomes more of a slog to get to the good parts. And there is one really, really good part. I still remember it scaring me so much as a kid I refused to go into our basement for weeks afterwards. It is a segment when Dr. Karmas takes his little trip down into the Blackwood family crypt and finds something that should probably have best gone undisturbed. Dissipity though that an adventurous company like Blue Underground or Anchor Bay Entertainment doesn't resurrect and restore this bizarre, flawed, but interesting bit of Euro horror. With his widescreen shot compositions and colour schemes intact, the Italian cut I found not only runs circles around the prints turning up on the Brentwood and Diamond DVD sets, but it does away with the another film where every shot is a close-up charge. Those close-ups are the result of a widescreen image being chopped, reformatted and blown up to play back on television sets. And as is evident on the latest DVD release by Diamond, some of the distributors looped, slowed down, or even froze individual frames to cover up a little graphic luridness that Margarita used and was deemed unacceptable. Yet right there we come to the meat of the thesis on why Nella Stretta Morsa del Ragno will always be looked upon as less than a success. It is too tame for the time period it was made in. The Italian print does include some very brief nudity and, like the Synapse DVD release of Castle of Blood, spends more time establishing the illicit lesbian relationship between Elizabeth and Julia, but it's nothing too thrilling. And by today's standards, the whole affair is the shock effect of a good Dark Shadows episode. Yet it is worth checking out, especially if you are a fan of atmospheric 1970s period Euro horror with a touch of the erotic. Timeless Video's VHS runs 94 minutes but has really awful colour rot to the print. Brentwood's print from the Circus of Death and Tales of Terror box sets runs about 96 minutes and looks a bit better, but not much. For the present, the version to go with for US buyers is to be found on Diamond's Double Bill. DVD of Circus of Fear runs about 98 minutes, it's a somewhat richer colour range and much better quality audio. And for its budget line price, you can't really can't beat it. I give Web of the Spider slash Nella Stretta Morsa del Ragnar 3 out of 4, but only because I have a soft spot for it and still feel the hair rise up my neck whenever Dr. Karma lights his candle, goes looking for that breathing sound, shiver. Now I'll read this out. A gorgeous gothic opera. The opening of this film treats us to Klaus Kinski in twice his usual state of delirium. I ought to mention this is from Dwin Grove on the 3rd of March 2004. Thrashing about in a shadowy cobweb laden crypt, he's playing Edgar Allan Poe, and he looks the very embodiment of an absinthe soaked poet Mordit. His role, alas, turns out to be little more than a glorified cameo. Still, he sets the tone admirably for the next 90 minutes of flickering candelabra, ethereal vampire beauties, and white muslin curtains billowing softly by moonlight. It would be easy to dismiss this movie as a compendium of gothic horror cliches, easy but unfair, I feel. Like any other highly stylized art form, romantic ballet, bel canto, opera, a gothic tale rests on a set of unreal and perhaps arbitrary conventions. Much of a fan's pleasure depends on how faithfully, how stylishly these conventions are played out. In truest gothic horror tradition, Nella Stretta Morsa del Ragnar does very little that's new, but does it in grand style. In a nutshell, the fiendishly deranged Poe inveigles the young journalist, Antony Franciosa, 
into spending a night in a creepy old mansion. The family who inhabit this mansion seem to spend all their time dying and coming back to life. The rest of the plot is predictable enough, but Michelle Mercier, as the most glamorous ghoul, looks stunning whether dead or undead. Her romantic agonies are offset by Octavio Scotti's splendid gothic art direction. If the editing and camera work look a little choppy at times, I blame the, go the ghastly pan and scan job on my video copy. Fortunately now, in the 21st century, we have Blu-ray, wherein this copy that you see here was derived from. Gorgeous, isn't it? Thanks again, my friends.